as much into it as you're suggesting. Uh, <clears throat> Hi, my name is Fred Parvin. I'm just a big admirer of Dr. Minsari. I just wanted to say this gentleman is Iranian, and he is one of the biggest gender advocates. <laughs> and one of I have to applaud him because he has been a championing the women of Iran since I started. He is a diehard advocate for gender equality. Oh, I actually featured him in an article we did at Huffington Post for men for gender equality. So Thank I'm you very much. <laughs> I, I didn't go to Barnard. Uh, what? what? I said I didn't go to Barnard. <laughs> um, just a quick question. In the general populace of Iran, what percentage of the men are actually supporting the feminist movement. I know you said that it's, it's incumbent on them to get involved, but I really have a hard time understanding. I know there was a movement that they, they were taking pictures of themselves. Yeah, and, but realistically, are men really involved? Because when I lived in Iran, even back then, it was sort of frowned upon. So. You know, I don't, I don't think there's statistically any, I don't think there's a viable statistic that I can give you that I know that's out there, and Professor Bullitt's agreeing with me. So, but in terms of my own interaction, what I see is that you have a young generation, for example, women are not getting married anymore. They're engaging in what's referred to as white marriage in Iran, which is cohabitating without getting married. Now that's illegal by Islamic law standards, but you have men who are actually not subscribing to the Islamic laws and engaging in what's referred to as white marriage. So that is an indication that these men are not beholden to Islamic patriarchal laws. The other was recently, um, I'm sure you have uh, a segment that is patriarchal and ideological uh, mindset, but you know, just recently, Nirufar Ardalan, who is the uh, female, uh, who is the coach for the Iranian girls football team, was banned from her husband from going to Malaysia to lead her teammates. Now in Iran, a husband can ban his wife from leaving the country. And ironically, this gentleman is a sports journalist, her husband, so I don't, um, but then you had all these, <laughs> then you had all these men, again on social media, Iranian men, men in Iran, husbands who came out, because in Iran, even though you are married and you fall under that, um, under the banner of that law, a husband can waive his right to all these amendments. Now, uh, thousands of Iranian husbands came out on social media holding placards saying that they waive their uh, right to hold their wives back in any capacity. So this was huge. This really went viral on social media, and which is what you brought up, and this was only last month. Men in Iran for gender equality that came out in droves in support of Nilufar Adalan to be able to leave the country without her husband's consent. So in terms of statistics, though, I don't, I don't, there's no statistics, unfortunately. We have time for one last question, the lady with the microphone. Hi, I'm Ann Barnard, 67. Speak, uh, speak into the mic, please. Oh, Barnard, 67, where I became a revolutionary and I've remained one and have followed the events in Iran ever since. Uh, I would like to know if the young women are dis uh, discussing, or inspired by invoking uh, their mothers and grandmothers and great-great-grandmothers because there's been a huge uh, women's dimension in every Iranian revolution from the 1905-06 